I'm never gonna be ready for tomorrow. Okay, it's there. God, I'm not gonna win this case. What does the judgment say again? Francine, I gotta talk to you right now. This is really bizarre. I wonder if we couldn't get sued. For God's sakes, Cherry, relax. Can't you see that I'm in here because I need peace? I'm trying to prepare the Villeneuve case. I'm in court tomorrow morning. It's complicated. And you know Villeneuve, if I lose, he's gonna make my life miserable. Oh, uh, he's connected all right. He knows everyone. And we all know it's the only way to get around with the city. But if you ask me, you make him to be more important than what he is. Look, Jerry, when I need your advice, I'll ask you for it, okay? Now, since you've already interrupted me, what is your problem? Ah, uh, that's not my problem. It's yours. You're the partner here. I'm just the associate, remember? The uh, cheap labor? Give it a rest, Jerry. We know you want to be a partner. You speak to me about it every other day. I've told you a hundred times it's between you and Madeline, and I haven't made up my mind. In fact, to tell you the truth, I've decided to wait until year end to see which one of you has the highest billings. You're both very good lawyers, and for me, that's an objective measuring stick to help me make up my mind. Okay, okay, fair enough. But get a load of this. I've just come back from court. You wouldn't believe what happened over there. And uh, what's more, it concerns Madeline? No. If this is courtroom gossip, I really don't have time for this right now. No, no. Wait until I tell you what happened. This morning, Madeline had a really simple case. Nothing complicated. No witnesses. That's all. The judge asks her a question. Madeline doesn't catch it. She asks him to repeat the question. She still doesn't get it. Believe it or not, she had him repeat the question four times. Finally, he calls her to the bench and he writes the question on a piece of paper. Can you believe it? I mean, she must have been partying late last night or something. Now, don't go spreading rumors, Jerry. Mind you, I don't understand. Madeline's an excellent attorney. I've never known her to act inappropriately. No, that's why I wanted to talk to you about it. Mm. Hi, everybody. My God, don't you look serious? Must be a big case. Yes, in fact, it's the Villeneuve case. By the way, Madeline, I wanted to congratulate you on the excellent research you did. It's really going to be useful to me for building my case. Um, Jerry, yep. I, I remember something. Patrick was looking for you before. Hmm? He wants you to go by his office right now. Hmm? Something about a factum that you helped him prepare? Factum? What factum? Oh, yes, now I remember. It's been so long, I'd almost forgotten about it. I'll see Patrick right now. And uh, close the door behind you. Madeline, I'd like you to tell me what happened in court this morning. What? What do you mean? I heard some rumors, but I'd like to have your version. A colleague from another firm called me from court. It would seem that you had some difficulty with the judge and that the judge had to write down his question. The person who called felt that it would be quite embarrassing to you and potentially to the firm. Oh, my God. Um, look, Francine, it's not always easy being a hard of hearing lawyer. And look, I've never been in that kind of situation before. And I must tell you that the judge was very fair about it. But, you know, you know him, he speaks very softly, he doesn't move his lips. He's very hard for anybody to understand. Well, that's too bad, Mandlin, but it does happen. You're going to have to do something about this. When I hired you, you assured me that despite your hearing difficulty, you could function quite well. Even if today was somewhat of an exception, we just can't afford to let it happen. There's just no way. We can't afford to have the image of the firm affected. You're going to have to take the situation in hand. You know, I've done everything in my power. I just can't decide I'm going to hear better. I've bought the best hearing aids that are available on the market. I've taken courses to improve my speech reading skills. But when I'm in front of a judge who mumbles, whose face has no expression, he doesn't move his lips, well, all the best hearing aids and courses just don't help. But what can I say? That's not my problem. We can't choose our judges. 
you're going to have to find a solution. Otherwise, I'm not going to have a choice. I'm going to have to make Jerry the new partner. Oh, that is really unfair. You know that I'm the better lawyer. I mean, a few moments ago, you were saying that I do excellent research, and you've always said that I have talent as a litigator, and apart from that, I've also brought you a lot of new clients. So yes, I know all of that. But you have to understand, I can't run the risk of what happened today happening again. You know how word gets around. If they start saying that we have a lawyer, that people, I mean clients, could even remotely suspect doesn't understand everything, it's going to scare them off. Imagine a deaf lawyer pleading in court. Hey, I'm not deaf, I'm hard of hearing. Okay. And there are some deaf lawyers that are very good litigators. I don't know of any. Well, I'm telling you, there's some. I spoke to a friend of mine who is a lawyer in Alberta who is also hard of hearing. And uh, he used an, an FM system, which is an assistive listening device and is portable. And for the really big cases, well, then he uses a court stenographer. And uh, then he gets all the text of everything that is said in court and in real time, too. No, I don't think that's going to be a solution. Firstly, it's probably very expensive, and you could be darn sure that I don't want a lawyer trotting around in court with a machine and a stenographer. No, you can't go to court anymore. You're going to work from here. You could do research or something until I've found a better solution. A solution? You are going to prevent me from going to court? You are going to stop me from doing what I love to do? Give me a break. No, no, and no. There's no way. With what happened this morning, we already run the risk of losing clients. The reputation of the firm is at stake. I worked very hard to build a name for this firm. I'm not going to watch it go up in smoke. Look, if it's reputation that you're worried about, think about yours. When people start hearing about the fact that you prevent me from litigating, think about that. Great, another problem to solve.